This past winter, I did some testing to see if it was true that when water combines with weather wool, it generates heat. Whoa. 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 Okay. I'm okay. It might actually be true that wool generates heat. I am actually, I'm certainly no colder than I was before I went in the river. That alone is astonishing. But there's a chance, like where the wool is touching my back, that I'm warmer now than I was before I went in. Some people saw that video and called BS. I don't blame you. That's the reason I did the test in the first place. I didn't really necessarily believe it either and I needed to see for myself. But I was still wondering, you know, what is actually happening? How much temperature change is occurring? And so on a recent trip to the Weatherwool headquarters, I, uh, got together with Ralph and his wife Debbie in the kitchen and we got some thermometers out and some weather wool and we put it to some slightly more scientific tests. Hope you enjoy these. This is Ralph and Debbie and Trust and Timber for weather wool. We are going to do an experiment which will hopefully demonstrate that the old maxim about wool keeping you warm when wet is actually not only true but is underscored by some chemical reactions that will occur within a woolen fiber when wool intakes water vapor. We haven't done this before, we'll find out. We're starting out with some water in this bottle that's actually a little bit lower than room temperature. The water in this bottle is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. We have here two other thermometers. These are reading in degrees Celsius. One of them is showing 21 and a half or so degrees, uh, I mean percent relative humidity and both of them are showing temperature at about 22 degrees Celsius, which is a few degrees warmer than the 65 degree water. Not a lot, but a little bit warmer. We want to make sure that the water itself is not adding any heat to the woolen fabric when we spray the water in there. So we know that the water right now is actually cooler than the room and cooler than the fabric, which has been sitting in this room for a while. Mm -hmm. The humidity went down mm -hmm. dramatically. It's at 15.2. That's interesting. It's drier in the wool than in the air. Well, the wool's supposed to do that. It's supposed to dry the air as, it, as it's exposed to air. So now we're going to spray this wool with some cooler water. Mist it. Rain? No, it's representing humid air. Because oh. rain would be liquid and humid air would be more like vapor, although you're right, we weren't spraying true water vapor, we were spraying tiny droplets which hopefully had more of a component of water vapor than rain might. So this is interesting, relative humidity now is 100 and the temperature has dropped to 19.3. And what we're hoping is going to happen is that that's going to actually go up past where it was, 22. 22, yep. 19.4, 5. 19.6, 7. 19.8, 19.9. So I guess you could say that until it gets up to 22, it's just sort of equalizing back to the room temperature. But if it goes above 22, that will be pretty interesting. Is it happening? It's up to 21. All right. 21.1. 21.2, 21.3, seems like it's going up more quickly, 4, 21.5, it seems like the temperature is going up more quickly now, 21.6, 21.7, 21.8, 21.9, 21.4, 21.5, 21.6, 21.7, 21.8, 21.9, 21.10, 21.11, 21.12, 21.13, 21.14, 21.15, 21.16, 21.17, 21.18, 21.19, 
22. Okay, that's back where we started. 22. 22.1. warmer. Twenty-three, so it's one degree Celsius warmer. Twenty-three point two. What's your temperature reading there? Twenty-two. I don't have my glasses on. Twenty-two point. Twenty-two point nine. Oh, so it's almost the same. Twenty-three point four here. So I have. That was war wet. Is getting is warmer. Although I did get that one a little bit wet too, but yes, the one that was wet with cooler water is warmer. So it's now 23.7 versus... 22.9. So that one actually has gone up uh, about a degree also, which is kind of interesting. This is 24 now. We probably should have had them farther apart when yeah. I missed it. Yeah. I probably missed it that one a little right. bit too. Though it's incredible, though, that both have gone up since the misting came out. And right. along with that, we're, we're more than two degrees. And, and this is less than, were we less yeah, than five minutes? Right, we should have timed it. I guess we'll have to do it again with a timer. Although you're recording, that gives That's you right. a timer, right? That's right. And we're six minutes and 33 seconds since we started the video. So, yeah, in less than five minutes, it has got almost three degrees warmer. Celsius. Water. Celsius. Celsius. So we're talking a good five degrees Fahrenheit. Now 24.7 Celsius, 24.8. This is still 23. 24.9. Okay, should we start playing some bets? How, <laughs> how, how hot is this wool gonna get? Well, I think we got, yep, we got 25. And so we started out by chilling it with colder water, colder than the room. And now it's gone up over three degrees Celsius from the temperature of the room. So it raised above the temperature of the room and it had to compensate for the cooler water to begin with. What was the low point, 19 Celsius? That's where we got down to. Um, I forgot, but yes, right, about 19. So the water chilled at about two degrees Celsius, and now, and now it's up six point. Oh, we lost our number. Yeah, it turns itself off every couple of minutes, and now it's gone up. Twenty-five point three. Six point three degrees Celsius since we sprayed the cool water on. Six point four. 6.4, uh, um, is it stabilizing now? Is it still going up? 25.4 and holding, maybe that's it. Maybe that's gonna be the mat, nope, 25 and a half. I wonder if it'll hold until humidity starts dropping. No, it'll, it'll drop before that. Yeah. So it's clearly wet at 100% humidity and increased six and a half degrees Celsius. That's enough to feel. Right. You when can feel you, six when degrees. When you were saying that you felt it warm on your back. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I wasn't lying. Yeah. And it, it, ha it had to overcome the cooler water too. The water wasn't... Right wasn't even room temperature. The water was a few degrees Fahrenheit cooler than room. This is so cool. Which I guess that's partly why you do you actually feels like you can feel it. Like when I get out and I'm standing there, it's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not that much warmer than I was before. Right. But you feel it because it, it dips. So you, it goes down. You For a moment, you feel mm -hmm. extremely cold. Right. And then you have that change right. as it gets warmer. You're feeling warmer. the water, and then you're feeling the heat. 25.6. And this one, 
surfaces. So this is our drywall. And it's 22.6. It looks like 25.6 is where it's holding. Oh, 25.5. So, it, nope, it went back to 25.6. 25.5 again. So it looks like that's probably the, the top. Warmed up six and a half degrees Celsius, which is almost 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. From the low when we added the cold water, wow. the cool water. So. Yeah, you want to explain why we're doing Celsius? Um, because the thermometers default to Celsius <laughs> and because we're scientists right now, and scientists talk Celsius. So nine degrees Fahrenheit equals five degrees Celsius. Not, not quite double, but as a rule of thumb, you can kind of think double. And it's a pretty big deal that, you know, everybody knows that when you get wet in the cold, it's a disaster. But the, what we're trying to prove is that when wool gets wet in the cold, it can save your life because what wool does is it picks up the water from the air, or in this case, the water from the mister, adsorbs and absorbs that water into the woolen fiber so that the water is no longer in contact with your skin where it can pull heat from you. And when inside the woolen fiber, water vapor actually reacts with elements within the woolen fiber and demonstrably produces some heat. Yeah, I'm warming up quick actually. It's, it's not fun going in, but uh, shortly after, I'm okay. My hands are freezing because these are not the same product and my feet are cold. Other than my feet and my hands and my legs and my upper body is actually totally fine. I feel rejuvenated, I feel good. <laughs> yeah, let's go make a fire and make some coffee. It's, uh, it's quite a counterintuitive and an extremely important behavior for a garment that is intended for all purpose, all weather, outdoor use. Wow, this is just a crude experiment, but I think it was really clear that, that wool produces heat when you wet it. We started with wool at room temperature. We added water that was a little bit below room temperature, about two degrees Celsius, three degrees Celsius below room temperature, went from 22 down to 19 when we added the spritzer and then back up to 25.6. So it came up six and a half degrees or so after the cool water spritzing. And right now it's still at 25.1. So it's barely dropped in temperature at all, even though the room is somewhat cooler. You know, that's really when you need the heat the most is, you know, you, you fall to your canoe or you get stuck in a situation yeah, that first reaction to, to combat that, mm -hmm. that initial plunge or whatever it is that, that got you cold in the first place when you need the heat probably the most, right? True. And then the other thing, too, where wool is, is famously a nice thing to have is not so much when you get dunked in a river, but when you go out in a cold, humid, clammy day. It's, say, a little bit above freezing. The air is very wet. Maybe it was raining, and now it's just the air is full of humidity and you come, in, you come out from inside where your garment is relatively dry, you have cold, wet air pushing its way into your garment, and as the air enters your garment, your wool fiber of that garment picks up the humidity from the air, dries the air as it's on its way into you, so it's creating a warmer, drier environment around you. Drier because it's picked up humidity from the air, so that humidity won't rob heat from you. But amazingly, as the wool picks up that humidity and binds it inside the woolen fiber, the reactions between the water vapor and the wool fiber, the internals of the wool fiber, actually produce a significant amount of heat. And if you're walking around on a humid day, then this reaction may continue quite a while. You know, we did a little bit of spritzing and stopped, but next experiment might be what happens if we walk around for an hour on a humid day. Does that reaction continue for a while? Everyone seems to think that wool can pick up 30% of its weight in water and still feel totally dry because all that water is carried internally. 
Um, I don't know how much we added here. That would be another thing. We could weigh the wool. Um, but the counterintuitive phenomenon of generating heat from water has been, I think, pretty, pretty clearly demonstrated by this, this kitchen table simple experiment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nature knows what she's doing. Now we'll see about cotton. Going up in humidity, but not Celsius. Nothing. All right. Good to know. Okay, so we're moving into experiment three now. We're going to do a, a dunking. So water temperature about 64 degrees. Mm. Here we go. So even though that, that wool went in the water, it didn't really fully get soaked because of the properties of wool. So dry, yeah, 23.7, 13% humidity. When the humidity is up to 100%, it is 26.4. With the being dumped in cold water? Yeah. 